today on Divorce Court. I'm on Divorce Court today because Jamar's drinking is absolutely running me ragged. I can't do it anymore. There are some things that I've done in the past. My alcohol abuse has kind of come in between us, but she also has an alcohol issue as well. If you're gonna hold me to a standard, you can't be a hypocrite. I want the judge to tell Jamar that he's gonna lose something really special if he can't just get it together. I want the judge to tell Sari that you are an enabler. You do have a problem as well. Jamar, I want you to stop the drinking. I just want you to be the man that I thought you were when I first met you. Divorce court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Sari Bohm and Jamar Adair. The two of you have been living together for a year and a half, though you've been together for two years. You're having difficulty in your relationship, so you've come to see me. Ms. Bohm, I'm gonna start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why you're here in divorce court today? So I'm here because Jamar uh, has kind of a drinking problem. Um, I feel like it's really taken a toll on our relationship. Um, all the problems that we have stem from the alcohol. Okay. When did you first discern that Mr. Adair might have a drinking problem? In the very beginning, it was, I couldn't tell because everybody kind of likes to drink. Like, he likes to mm -hmm. drink. I'm like, okay, there's, that's not a problem. Um, but about six months into our relationship, I had planned, like, a birthday dinner for him. Mm -hmm. Made the reservation. I was all cute. I made some little handmade gifts. It was just so thoughtful. And he didn't show up. It was like 6.30, 7.30, 8.30, he did not show up. And didn't hear from him until the next day. Found out that he got too drunk with his friends, passed out, and just didn't come out. Mr. Adair, did you get too drunk to show up at your own birthday party? Uh, yeah, I intended to come. Right. To, to, that was the plan. Right. Uh, I, I did do a little, little bit much that night and uh, had a few drinks and got a little carried away that night. I, uh -huh. I have to admit that, yeah. Is that unusual? A, a, meaning, is it unusual as in, is that irregular or irregular well, behavior? Yeah, is it unusual for you to get so drunk that you, 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 you don't show up? It, it's it's a rarity for me to get that far, get, get that drunk. Okay. Uh, Ms. Bone, why don't you give me other examples of instances that demonstrates that he does, in mm -hmm. fact, have a problem with alcohol? A month after that, um, I had been texting him, and I, he told me he was going out with his friends. I'm like, okay, be safe, whatever. Didn't hear from him for the majority of the night. I got really worried. Like, I thought that something really bad happened. Found out that he got, like, a DUI, he lost his car, and then about two months after that, he moved in with me. And um, I kind of started noticing, like, he wasn't getting up on time. He was, like, not showing up to work some days because he was too hungover. And so it just, I realized, like, okay, maybe this is a little more severe than, than I thought. Um, one night, I came home from work about 5 o'clock, and he was working overnights. So he was supposed to work 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. And he was passed out, like, still in his clothes, for, like, from the night before at work. And I had to, like, shake him. I was like, get up. Like, you got to go to work. Come on, get up. And um, as soon as he woke up, up. He was still, like, drunk. He was calling me out of my name. He was just sloppy. And it might come as a surprise, but he didn't get to work on time. He got fired, didn't have a job for a month. You know, I had to kind of support everything. So Were you living just... together at that time? Yes, yes. Okay. Mr. Dare, did all that happen? Uh, that is partially correct. Okay, you give it to me correctly. Th th there's a thing that she's leaving out. She's an enabler as well. All so right. I do have the drinking problem which I'll admit, um, and I didn't realize it until the situation with, as far as losing jobs and things like that. But if you are getting off work at 3 a.m. as a bartender and you have to go out after you get off work and have a couple drinks, get home at 8 in the morning, and expect to hold me to the same standard. But this story, this we're talking about stories where I'm at work, so I'm not there. I come well, home. Well, how is and that you enabling you, though? She's just right. going out drinking. She's not bringing it home. So how does that enable you? Well, that's another aspect of it. There okay. are times when she'll have some friends. Um, just for instance, maybe a month or so ago, had some friends come from out of town. The alcoholic is at home, minding his business, not being an alcoholic. <laughs> And uh, she brings some alcohol home with some friends. I mean, if that's but not enabling. But what do I tell you, though? I tell you, hey, don't feel obligated to kick it with us. Like, you can go to sleep. We'll be quiet. Well, we'll... now, wait a minute. That's like saying, you know, you got a drug addict in here. Hey, I got some drugs here, but don't feel obligated. Oh, my God. You know what I mean? <laughs> it just it doesn't make a lot of sense. Does it? No, but... Do you believe he's an alcoholic? I do, yeah. What does that mean? 
It means that he he has an addiction to alcohol. And he can't control it. He, yeah, he's He's not in charge of he his body. Yeah. The booze is. So why would you bring something that dictates to him what he should do into his environment? Yo. That's valid. I mean, I shouldn't do that, but it was only, like, one or two times that mm. that happened. The majority of the issue is, like, when he's on his own time. Like, when he has That's full when he truly control gets over lit. his choices. Exactly. Like, if he's coming home from work, sometimes he'll pick up, like, some beers and come home and drink until he passes out. That's not me. That's his own choices that he's making. Mr. Adair, you do understand that that's between you and your addiction and not a function of what she's doing. I do understand, and a lot of the reasons why I do drink it's because of the stresses. Um, you know, I have a daughter and, and things like that, and uh, the fact that how I... Does, how does that drive you to drink? Well, you know, just a lot of responsibility. Um, it was a situation that was kind of unexpected. Um, I slept with someone uh -huh. uh, early on before uh, Sari and I started seeing each other, and that whole process, the stress of finding out that there was a child in the picture and all that good stuff just makes you... Sometimes you need a, just a little a, a reliever. You know, after you get off work, you may want to, you know, un, uh, unplug, and, and sometimes I, I charge up a little bit when I unplug, if you know what I mean. Now, I, I, I get you, I get you, charge I get you. Up. Life is full of stress. I mean, everybody in here has got a story to tell. And I'm not saying that you don't have stress, and mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you're not an alcoholic, and I'm not saying it's all your fault, but I'm saying that stress is a part of life. And sometimes you I know think what I mean? that... I'm sorry to interrupt Go ahead. You, but Go ahead. sometimes I think that you cause... Like, he causes his own stress, you know? How's like that? There have been times where, like... Like, one time I came home and the, the front door was not only unlocked, it was open. I come home and I'm like, what's going on? Like, Jamar's been home all night. Why is the front door open? Like, what's happening? I walk into our bedroom and he's passed out on the bed and he was, like, gray. Like, I thought he was dead. And it was scary. And I'm so... I'm, like, shaking him. I'm like... No, this cannot happen. You know, I was freaking out. And once I wake him up, he was angry that I woke him up out of his sleep. And I'm like, but you left the front door open and you're passed out and I thought you were dead. Like, how can you be mad at me right now? And so, like, these things compile on top of each other and then he drinks because he's stressed about the fact that he drinks. And, like, he, you know what I mean? Right, like, yeah. No, it's, it's a just, vicious cycle yeah. and he can't, he can't get out of it. Mr. Dare, would you care to correct any of that or I mean, well, she, address that, it? That is, a, that is a true story. I mean, that's, that did happen. Uh, but but the thing is, like, I'm, I'm in a position where I'm trying to... I'm going through some procedures, taking some treatment, doing some... taking some classes, and I have been more responsible lately. Granted, there are, there are times where we all backslide a little bit, and, uh, I've had those instances. But it, there is a point to where she is also responsible for some of these things, and once we can come to level ground to not have alcohol be as big of a factor in our mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. I think, uh, it'll be easier for both of us not to have the pressure of dealing with the substances and things like that. Okay. Listen. Well, we've, we've, we've talked about the alcohol for a while now. Now I want to uh, turn the page and talk about why you believe Mr. Adair is cheating. I knew he was texting this girl that he was friends with, but I woke up and he was gone. And I check on my phone and there I just see the little the car going away. Yeah. It's driving up into the boondocks. And I'm like, you're spending my money to take a ride to go see this girl at one in the morning. So, Ms. Bohm, why do you believe Mr. Adair is cheating on you? Because he has cheated in the past. There, like, we were early on the relationship still. It was, like, six months into it. Probably six months around in. the time where he was having a bunch of drinking problems. He was just doing, doing a lot. And so, um, one night, I had, like, this weird dream, and mm -hmm. he was in it, and it woke me up, and I was like, I just have a bad feeling. I don't know what's going on. Lo and behold, he texted me. He's like, hey, I have something to tell you. And I'm like... What could that be? Like, I knew. I already knew. And he's like, um, I went over to this girl's house. We didn't have sex, but, like, we had... We did sexual things. And I'm like, wow. You know, like, I understand that drinking can inebriate your judgment or whatever, but, like, the fact that he's done that before kind of makes me question stuff. And I'm pretty chill about things. Like, I'm okay with you having friends that are girls. You know, like, I encourage mm -hmm. that. Absolutely. You have friends. Friends this of all kinds. six time. months in. Yeah. And, like, there was another time that I woke up in the middle of the night. I knew he was texting this girl that he was friends with, and I was cool with it. Like, I didn't have any reason to be, like, 
weird about it, but I woke up and he was gone. And I check on my phone and there I just see the little car oh, going away. Yeah. It's driving up into the boondocks. And I'm like, you're spending my money to take a ride to go see this girl at one in the morning. And then he comes back at like 6 a.m. saying they didn't do anything. I'm so, like, can you tell me about this young lady? So the, the situation that she's referring to when I made a mistake, um, had an intimate encounter with uh, uh, a young lady. Uh, yeah, a young lady <laughs> that I know. Um, that was something that it... I, before Sari and I, um, I had some relationships with, with people that they weren't as healthy, so I was in a position to where I was kind of, like, still not fully invested, but still trying to, like, show some consistency, and I was being inconsistent, so and my, my mind wasn't fully committed. Was so like, that... Uh, he couldn't decide. <laughs> That happened because I, I was the state of mind I was in. I wasn't really fully invested. That was a mistake. Now the situation with the girl, it was her money that I did spend to get the the ride, um, and I did go over to the young lady's house, friends. You know, nothing nothing happened. But I'm not cheating. I can guarantee you that I'm not cheating. Knowingly. <laughs> um, I'm not when you cheating. get inebriated, you're not quite sure what exactly goes down. I've only correct? had a couple. I've only had like maybe two instances where I've been inebriated beyond, like, being, being able to remember. But these particular situations, like, I'm together enough to be able to, to know to what's know going what, on. know what's going on. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna move on to the next topic. You say that, you know, not only is he drinking, not only do I think he's, you know, ride-sharing about to see other women, that the sex life at home has slowed to nothing. I got some lingerie. It was like lacy and, you know, the cheeks was out. And he walks in the door and he's just like, oh, you look good, babe. And then, like, he went and grabbed a, a beer out of the fridge and plops down on the couch. I'm like, well, have sex with your beer then. See how that goes over for you. Would you end a relationship if your partner got drunk multiple times a week? Tell us what you think at Divorce Court. So tell me about your intimacy level. You say it's non-existent. Yeah, we're just not on the same page at all. I feel like um, there's no passion there, and right. I think part of it is, like, I'm physically attracted to him, but it's hard to be attracted to somebody when they can't even get up for work on time. Like, I'm like, how, do I, how can I get that passionate, emotional feel when, like... It's just sloppy. He's an ongoing like, sloppy prop. Yeah. <laughs> but I've tried to bring the sexy back a little bit. You know, one time I made, like, a special trip after work. I got some lingerie. It was, like, lacy, and, you know, the cheeks was out. And, you know, like, I was ready. So he walks in the door, and he's just like, oh, you look good, babe. And I'm like, I look good? That's it? Like, I look good? That's it. And then, like, he, he, he went and grabbed a, a beer out of the fridge and plops down on the couch. I'm like, well, have sex with your beer then. See how that goes over for you. Mr. Dare, do you recall that well, circumstance? See, I, I do recall that circumstance, but here's the thing. Like, we all have needs, of course. Man has... Man, we have a, a higher appetite sometimes for sex, a higher drive. So... She's not complaining about I, that. I, I know, but right. see, the thing is, with the mistakes that I've made, and sometimes she look at me as, like, when I do make passes or I do try to be intimate, she kind of, you know throws the cold shoulder, treats me like a bum sometimes. So when you decided it's on your time, right, mm -hmm. you're ready for me, so now I'm just supposed to give you what you... And it don't work like that, Judge. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. So at that particular instance... Because she's refused you in the past, and now on and this particular day, she ready decides willing, she's yeah, ready. When it's, when yeah. it's, when it's, do you when understand she's why she's refused you in the past? Uh, I, I, I do understand. It, it's hard to be romantically involved with a guy who's just sloppy drunk. She's got to treat you like you're five. You got to close the door for you. She got to wake you up. She finds you in the closet with your blankie. It's hard. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it makes sense. I it's understand. not. It's not romantic. It's not no. an aphrodisiac. It doesn't make you say, mm -hmm. mm, not yeah. at all. True. Yeah. True. But I've tried. Like I've tried. You yeah. know what I mean? So I do you, have she refused sex for a, an extended period of time? Um, it's always. I'm not in the mood or I'm sleep. She gives these excuses, and I'm like, okay, you know? And I take it as being, you know, that is, that is what it is. You but still have concerns that he still has feelings for his ex, though, don't you? Yes. Why is that? This was earlier on, too. We had had, like, a little getaway weekend together. It was a great time. 
we were in the car and there was just like an R&B station on or something and I'm just looking out the window, I'm like, that was such a good time. Like, wow, that was so fun. I look over and he's sobbing. And I'm like, are you crying because you love me so much? Like, that has to be it. No, I asked him what was wrong. And he's like, I miss my best friend, bro. And I'm like, who's your best friend? Did something happen? Did somebody pass away? He's like, I miss my ex, bro. And I'm like. He called you bro? He, well, like just the way he was saying uh -huh. it, I don't know if he called me bro or what. But, but it was a, it was it a was bro just, vibe. It was like a bro vibe. Because he wanted me to be like, oh, it's gonna be okay. She'll come back. Did you, or something did you, like did that. you whine you want to, to your say? new woman about Listen, missing you want your want old say? woman? It wasn't that Hang dramatic. On. It wasn't that dramatic. You know, we listened to a song, and a song, you know, kind of took me to a place, and a t couple tears went, went down, and she happened to look over <laughs> he was when the tear was when the tear had started. came on down. Came down. So so just bad timing. Yeah, it was just bad timing. You know, I'd have, you know, it would have been just a done moment. And I, but I wanted to be honest with her. And um, at that point, you know, I was feeling like I, I needed to be more invested in the relationship with okay. her. Okay, okay. And, and I got gotcha. you. And it was just, you know, I, I, I get it. I understand completely. I understand completely. And I got something to say. What would you do if your partner cried while reminiscing about their ex? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. Hey, I am no expert on alcoholism, but I will say this. I don't think you can dabble yourself into a cure. I think you really have to commit yourself to it. That's number one. Number two, until you have committed yourself to a cure and stopped drinking alcohol, you better put down the keys to that car. You have absolutely no right whatsoever to be behind the wheels of a car in a state of inebriation and putting us all at risk. None whatsoever. Ain't no junk, ain't nothing funny. No right. You got that part? I hear you. If you were my daughter, they would be pulling me off you right now. I'd be smacking you in the head. Listen, six months in, this cat's sloppy drunk, DUI, crying over his ex. Why is it that women don't know when to leave? You didn't have anything invested in him. You don't have kids together. I mean, is, is, is there a last free guy in your city? I don't know. But I just don't understand. There's nothing to recommend him. You know, you'll like him. He's cute. I don't know if he's good and bad or not. <laughs> but you can get that anywhere. Yeah. Why commit your life to a person who is so addicted to his substance that he can't get up for work? Why stick it out when you've got nothing invested? I just don't understand that. I get woman after woman after woman coming in here, putting up with all kinds of not You could do bad all by you. I'd rather be alone. <laughs> he comes in drunk, leaves the door open, somebody comes in and rapes you. What is that? He's not responsible. He's not caring for you. He's pointing at everybody but the cat in the mirror. Oh, there she's telling him she loves him. Now I'm just done. Do what you want to. But when you wake up five years from now and this stuff is all jacked up, remember I told you so, because I told you so. This matter is adjourned. So you want to make this work? I do. I just, I believe in him and I just want him to, like, I just want him to tap into the potential that I see. Because there is, like, he doesn't have to let that addiction control him. Right. What are you willing to do now uh, in order to prove to her that, you know, you're there for her. She wants you, man. She's in love right. with you. I mean, sim simple as, you know, just being sober. And at the end of the day, uh, if that's what I need to do to continue, you know, the future with Sari, then that's hands down, it's done.